What is an animated looping texture? You've probably seen them in like a bajillion YouTube videos because they're OP at bringing scenes to life. They're super versatile, add depth and context, and are generally visually appealing, which makes them a perfect technique to learn in After Effects and incorporate them into scenes of your own. Today, we're gonna cover techniques on how to recreate this effect. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to create and apply a seamless looping animated textures to your work. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. One of the most popular animated looping textures I've seen is this paper texture. It's literally everywhere. And funny enough, it's actually one of the easiest ones to make. So you can easily type in paper texture on Google images, or you can go to unsplash.com, which has a lot of great images. And here I'm going to type in paper texture. So here we have a lot of options to pick from. And what we may want to use is a paper texture that has a lot of contrast and wrinkles in it just to give it that mad cringe YouTube look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's save this here. And next, we're going to want to import that image into After Effects. It's a super huge image, which is good. And we have a new composition set to 12 frames per second. We don't want to use 24 frames per second because one of the things about these animated looping textures is that they tend to feel a bit like stop motion. To easily mimic that effect, we can just lower those frame rates down to 12 frames per second. And that's going to make the images come on a little bit more choppy. So right now, this whole composition is only four frames frames long because we don't need that much frames. In fact, we can maybe raise this up from four frames to six frames. So we have this composition set up to six frames, which is super, super short. It's not even a full second at all, but this is perfect for this effect because we don't need it any more than six images being shown in this loop. Let's click on that layer and then press S on our keyboard and hold down shift and then press P. That'll bring up the position and scale options. Let's also add in the rotation option option by holding shift and pressing R. Now we have all three of those set there. We're going to want to click on this little icon here that is a stopwatch icon and doing so adds in a brand new keyframe saying for this paper texture to be right here at this moment in time. We scrub forward a little bit. We can then move this paper texture over off into the corner. Bam. And then we're going to do the same thing. Just moving around this texture. going to have fun with it. Let's see. Just dragging it all the way around. So every frame that comes on is visually different than the last one. Honestly, that looks perfect. I don't think I've seen anything better. We didn't even have to adjust the scale or rotation. Look at that. Okay, so that was the first technique, which is super simple. Just dragging in any image, applying some keyframes to move that image around. We watch that back. Oh, we have a fully usable animated texture right here. So you may be thinking we have six frames, which are good to go, but most animations are maybe five seconds or 10 seconds long. So four frames is definitely not gonna cut it. So the next technique I'm gonna show show you is how we're going to loop this animated texture seamlessly so that we can use this for however long we want, whether that's a couple seconds or a couple minutes, even in hours. Honestly, it's it's an infinite scale right there. So you can pick however long you want. Shoot, do I have like an animation? I wish I had like an animation I could just pull up. Another thing to do, make sure that you hit save because otherwise After Effects does not pop in. It's auto save and you're stuck with nothing working. So hit save and that'll trigger in the autosave and he won't be crying dead ass. So here we have another composition which is set up as a five second long composition. If we drag in our animated paper composition, we can see it does not fit the entire length of the video. So what we want to do is right click on the animated paper composition in the timeline then go all the way up to time, enable time remapping. Next, we're gonna wanna go to the frame right before our last frame, which is indicated by this keyframe. And we wanna set a keyframe right here. If this sounds confusing, I'll explain it all in a second. Next thing that we wanna do is alt click on the stopwatch icon and type in loop out, which is pretty cool. You don't even have to type in the whole thing. After Effects comes up with this little pop down menu and you can hit down on your keyboard and then press enter and bam, you got loop out right there in this expression box. What this is going to do, it's going to loop this entire composition for however long this layer is. So if we drag it all the way out to here, you can see it keeps going on and on. Except one thing you're going to notice is that we have this little moment where it's all black. And that's why we had set this keyframe earlier, because we're going to delete this last keyframe. And that's going to get rid of that little black area that shows up 
when we loop this out. Now that same animated paper texture is working for over five seconds. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is how do we actually apply this in a way that deforms certain elements. So let's go ahead, add in a new text layer. Then I'm gonna type in paper. And already this looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and add in an effect. Then we're gonna go to distort and click displacement map. Next thing we wanna do is change the displacement map layer from paper to animated paper. You're gonna see it subtly change just like that. Right now, everything is gonna be moving. It's not the effect that we want it to do. We want it to actually be applied based on the lightness and the darkness. So I'm gonna change these two to lightness and now the effect should only happen wherever we see the light areas on this image in the dark areas as well. Five pixels might not be enough to really see this effect. So let's raise this up to something like 25 for both of them. And now when we hit play, we have this paper texture deforming the text. And now the scene is really affected by this paper texture, which looks really, really cool. If you really want something crazy, we can crank these values up much, much higher. But at this point, it becomes a little bit difficult to read and you kind of can tell the parts where it doesn't affect it entirely well. Take this effect to the next level, we can introduce a mat to it, which will help make this look a little bit more like that intro shot that I showed you earlier. So I have this dancing video clip here. And if I run this through Runway ML, have it rotoscope out a character, then I'm left with a mat that looks something like this. Now it's not perfect. Sometimes it picks up other people, but since there's nothing in the background, I think this is gonna work pretty well for this effect. So to create this effect, I'm gonna start from scratch with a brand new composition. Let's drag in that animated paper texture that we have. I'm gonna do the same steps to make sure that it loops out infinitely. And then I'm gonna drag in my dancing video clip, which I have right here. Okay, that looks pretty good. The next thing I wanna do is drag in my mat of just one person, which looks like this video clip. So I don't actually need this mat layer to be turned on since I'm just gonna have it driving information to the animated paper. So let's go ahead and click on this eye icon so that it turns off its visibility. And we still have the basic dance video in the background here. Next thing Thing, we're gonna want this animated paper on top because that's where the effect is gonna live and it's gonna go on top of the video. And then we're gonna use a really cool effect in After Effects called Set Matte, which we can find and apply by right-clicking on the layer, going to Effect, and then under the Channel section, we'll see a Set Matte option here. Now with that applied, nothing happens until we change the Take Matte from Layer from Animated Paper to the Removed Background version that we have. And instantly, you can see how the animated paper texture is right there. So off the the bat the effect looks pretty cool but we can also fine tune this to our liking by going over to the animated paper texture and right clicking on it then let's go over to effect the color correction and add in a curves effect just pop a little bit more i'm going to go to the red channel i want to raise this up because i want this to actually have a bit of a reddish tone to it lower this down a little bit. And this is really cool. Another thing that we can do since we have this set with the set matte effect is it's going to let us apply even more effects to the same layer. And a really cool one that I like to do is add in a drop shadow effect. And all of a sudden we get this nice little extra border here. I'm going to increase the distance slightly, increase the softness. Now the paper texture overlay stands out a little bit better. And I think this looks really cool so far. Now using the same techniques, you can recreate this example, which rather than just using the animated paper texture at these hard intervals where every frame is a completely different image. You can have a little bit more fun with the position, scale, and rotation of this to give us an effect that looks something like this. And we don't have to use specifically just a paper texture. We can also use things like scans from newspapers, which is something that I did here. So this variant uses the same techniques, except now we actually have this slight bit of camera shake involved. And that's just because there's more keyframes in between this transition state and the motion blur was turned on. So here we can combine both of those textures that we have the fast newspaper one and then the animated paper texture and we have a really interesting looking result bringing a lot more motion and energy to a scene that already had a lot of motion and energy to match it so once these are all looking great we can render this out and if you're curious how to get a version of your animated texture with alpha transparencies like this one here does the image itself has to have a bit of alpha transparencies and then when exporting we're going to want to make sure that we set it to something like quicktime and animation and choose RGB plus alpha. That way the alpha channels also get shown. And then we can keep using this in any project that we want. So here's what the final results look like.
Now this is a really useful technique, but there are so many more awesome effects in After Effects. We go over the top 30 best effects in After Effects, which includes a multitude of ways to make a video stand out. I think it's going to be super helpful for you to watch. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah.